Central Florida Orlando experience been for the players? You said some genuinely kind things uh, in anticipation of coming here, and we lived up to the expectations. Yeah, no, no question about it. This is a, a beautiful area. Uh, I actually have a home here that, that uh, my wife and I come down and, and vacation at. And uh, what we did is we traveled on Christmas night so that we could get up uh, early on Monday morning and let our players go to Universal and, and spend from 9 o'clock to 2 in the, in the afternoon there. Uh, a lot of them have never been there before. It was a, a new experience for, for most of our team. And then we were able to get a short practice in on Monday night and then our normal uh, week on, on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They also had a great time yesterday at the community service and the event with the uh, where you hosted um, with an LSU player and a young child. and I know that's special to our team. They always do a great job with community service. Thank you, Coach. If you'll raise your hands and let us know you have a question, we've got one in the second row and then one out of the TV riser left. Let's so get going. You're on. Jody Denley of CardinalFloating.com. Coach, you just talk about Lamar and the preparation since the high has been and obviously a lot of hoopla that week. How has he been in practice and what have you seen during these bowl practices for him to improve a little? Yeah, that was uh, quite the experience for him, you know, and, and it started really on a Thursday night in Atlanta and then went all through the, the weekend in New York, and there were some intense moments, wondering whether he was gonna win the award or not win the award. Uh, I thought he handled it great. I thought he did a, a tremendous job representing our football team in the University of Louisville. Uh, I did think it took a little toll on him, wore him out a little bit, so when he first came back and got back into the routine of, of practice and lifting and conditioning, you know, it took him a few days to get back to Lamar. <coughs> Uh, but he's a guy with a tremendous amount of energy. He loves going out and practicing. He loves being around his teammates. Uh, and he's done a great job in, in our bowl preparation. In the back. Coach uh, Brandon Say with the BBRZ out of Baton Rouge. Uh, one of the defensive backs for LSU, and I asked him last week, said that you guys have absolutely not faced a defense like LSU. Um, one, do you think you have, and if so, who? And what is this defense going to present um, to you guys most no problem with? Yeah, I think they'll, they'll be the most talented defense that we've won against this year. They're very physical up front and do a great job in, in their run gaps and, and where they're supposed to fit. Their linebackers are big and, and can run and physical, and they've got guys that can match up and play man coverage. So I think just the, the number of snaps of man coverage that they play uh, will be new to us than, than most of the people we played this year. On the right, third row. Kyle Mass and GSC Sports at GSCSports.com. Um, you know, it's interesting the juxtaposition, the preparation of Lamar Jackson is obviously a feature um, on your side, but with uh, Fernat sitting this week, um, it's a little bit tougher to pick out who the feature player might be potentially in preparation. How did you adjust for that? Well, we, we've been able to watch guys carry the football, and uh, he's a really good football player. He's, he, he can run, he's physical, they're doing a, a tremendous job in their schemes on how they attacked people in running the game. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of video on, on how they're gonna operate with him in there. And it's a great challenge to us. You know, we're gonna have to be very disciplined. We're gonna have to run full speed to the ball. And we're gonna have to get a lot of guys there and, and uh, game tackle and, and just play with great effort to, to be able to have a, 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 and be able to control the running game. So it's second row left. is the LSU offense much different than it was when you were in Arkansas? Yeah, I mean, that was a long time ago. So uh, I, I think what they have been doing a great job of is being able to run the ball in, in different groupings, uh, different scheme-wise. They like to run the football. They always have liked to run the football, and they've always been good at it. But they've been able to mix it up now more in, in, in their passing game. I think that's changed a lot and how they attacked you with their passing game, how they've got their tight end involved in the passing game. Uh, so again, I think it's a great challenge for us. Let's move to the front row, right, then left. Hey, Coach Shock, do you say WAB TV in Baton Rouge? Um, a lot of people look at you as an offensive genius. They look at Dave Aranda as a defensive genius. Well, how do you view that matchup in the game, and what challenges does Aranda present as a coordinator? Yeah, Dave's a very, very good defensive coordinator. Uh, you know, we've watched some of his stuff when he was at Wisconsin and how much success they've had there. 
and then he come to, came to LSU, and he's actually doing um, some things different, you know, and, and I think what you see there is a guy that really knows how to utilize his <coughs> personnel and how to get the players in the right spots and, and use the, the skills that they have. So um, for him to be able to make that transition and, and the success that he's had uh, at different places and doing different schemes speaks a lot for him. Howard Lindsay, CardinalSports.com. Coach, without Hearns and Femarua, how does that affect your defense? How have you seen them adjust? Yeah, well, it's a loss to us. There's no question. James has been a, a great pass rusher for us. Henry's been a, a guy that provides a lot of depth and can play multiple positions. Uh, so we'll just have to make up for it um, with a couple different guys, you know. Jonathan Grenard will be in there. Jonathan's had a good year. He's played a lot of snaps. Uh, he's been productive and, and made plays for us. Stacy Thomas is another guy that can play multiple positions. He actually started his career at, at the position that James plays. So we'll be able to uh, mix him in there and, and get production. And we all know Stacy's been a really good football player for us. Back of the room, center. Coach Michael Seth from WDRB. <clears throat> I know we're talking about the bowl game. Where this is at? right back here. This is the first time we've seen you since a lot of the, the Wake Forest stuff happened. When it first happened, you issued a statement saying you had no knowledge of the situation. Um, when did that change, and what was your reaction uh, to learning stuff, more stuff? Yeah, I, I did not know that uh, there was a radio guy from, from Wake Forest who was in contact with one of our coaches. Uh, we've had an extensive investigation. Uh, obviously, we all know that our athletic director has suspended our uh, co-offensive coordinator, and the commissioner has uh, put down a fine. And, you know, we've worked through it. We've, we've had the uh, investigation, and we consider the matter closed, and we're here to play a bowl game. Third row on the left. Uh, probably along those lines. So when, what, did, what did you think of sort of the, the way it affected your all's image or your reputation that you guys got a lot of a lot of criticism for your integrity and uh, things like that over, over this past month. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, first and foremost, you've seen their coach come out and say that it was a, a Wake Forest issue. And like I said, we've, we've dealt with it. Uh, I think Tom Durich has done a great job. Uh, it's not fun to be here without our offensive coordinator. Lonnie's been a great coach for us. Uh, he does a tremendous job with our players. He's added a lot to our staff this year, and we certainly miss him. Fifth girl on the right. Uh, Whitney Hardy, WHS 11 in Louisville. There's so much going on off the field, I mean, with the Heisman and the two topics we're talking about now. How have the players handled kind of those distractions trying to prepare for this game? Yeah, I think our players have done a great job. You know, uh, unfortunately, we had the, the issue with two players being shot, and, you know, that was uh, something that was a tragedy, something that we talked to our team about that we're very fortunate that we're not at a funeral right now that both of them are healthy and, and have an opportunity to continue their career and get their degrees and do everything that they, they came to the University of Louisville to do. Uh, one of the things I always try to do with our players is put it all out there to them, uh, and then they need to understand uh, what our job is, to focus and get better throughout the bowl practices. We worked a lot of individual technique. Uh, we worked a lot of goods versus goods, ones versus ones. Uh, and then we took basically the last seven practice and focused on LSU and, you know, game plan and, and prepared like we normally would for a game. So uh, I've always liked the schedule for, for bowl games because I think part of it is the player just trying to get better. You know, the seniors trying to improve for this game and for the combines and, and for the draft. And the young guys trying to get into the depth and, and see the competition that they're going to have for spring ball. Third row on the left. Uh, just as it relates to James and, and Henry, what, what's the extent of their injuries? Like, when uh, could you expect them to be back for spring or any time like that? Or do you not have any idea about that? Yeah, I think James will be back for spring for sure. He, he uh, has an elbow injury. Henry has a, an injury to his foot and his shoulder. And uh, But we do think that they'll both be back. I'm not sure the timetable on Henry just yet. On the right. Over here. Where? I thought we got someone no, back to the back here. In the back. Where at? In the back, sir. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Um, Manuel DeLeon with Skyboat.com. Uh, with uh, Jackson winning the Heisman and, like you said, the investigations and uh, players being shot up, 
Can you talk about the mindset of the, the football team and who has stepped up inside the locker room to keep these guys focused on, uh, on the task and uh, the team that was here? Yeah, you know, that's been one of our uh, strengths all year, all year long is that we have tremendous leadership from within the team. You know, we've got the four seniors now that came back last year after their junior year. All four of them could have went out into the draft. They chose to come back to be leaders of the team. Um, we've got tremendous leadership on the offensive side from Brandon Radcliffe and Tobias Hughley. Uh, you know, and I, I think they've all, all done a, a really good job. You know, one of the things that we always focus on, too, is the good things that are going on and the positives. So we have a Heisman Trophy winner. We just had 16 guys graduate here at, at mid-year. Our guys are working extremely hard um, for this bowl game and, and doing a great job for that. So we feel like we've got a, a tremendous upside and, and coming off a great year where we had nine years and went 7-1 and one in the ACC Conference. And we're excited about this football game. I've always felt like a bowl game does two things. Number one, it sends the seniors out and finishes their career. And number two, it's the first game of, of next year. So what a great opponent to play for our guys coming back next year as the first game for next season. All the way to the back, TV, Roger, and the left. Lindsey Goff with CN2 Sports and Mobile. Um, last year, Lamar kind of emerged during practice for the bowl game. Has anybody jumped out to you this year? Uh, you know, there have been guys that have made tremendous improvement. Uh, one of them is Reggie Bonifon. I think, you know, making the move from, from quarterback slash running back to full-time receiver. We saw him improving all year as the year went on, and he's been very productive for us. Uh, but I really feel like this concentration in the bowl practice, he's really refined his, his skills and his technique. He understands it more, which makes him play even faster and quicker. And I feel like he's really, really jumped out and did a great job. Front row of the ring. Coach, you mentioned that LSU's passing the ball better than they used to, or at least mixing it up. I just wanted your take on Danny Yetling and the job he's done. He's been kind of labeled as a game manager, so to speak. But what are you saying? Yeah, I think he's came in and, and given a, bit, a big boost. You know, anytime you don't, you know, turn the ball over and you take care of it, and you allow your offense to move and get first downs. You make it very difficult on on the opponent that you're playing. And his ability to convert first downs and get the ball to different receivers and tight ends and running backs, you know, uh, I've never felt uh, as a quarterback that you're ever just a manager of the game. It's a very very difficult position. We ask them to do a lot out there. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on on that they put on themselves. So for his ability to come out and perform the way the way he has is. I think a, a really credit to him. We'll just take a couple more questions over here on the left. Hey, Coach. Uh, Chris Price, WBRZ in Baton Rouge. Um, a gentleman asked you earlier about your, your image, your reputation. I'm wondering how much does that matter to you? Uh, you seem to be able to, to kind of bounce back from some things that might have been potentially damaging to your reputation in the past. Yeah, one thing we do is, is look forward and really work on what's ahead of us and you know, I feel really good about what we've got going at Louisville. I think the three years we've been there, we've done a tremendous job uh, in, in two ways. Getting players an opportunity to pursue their dream and go in the NFL draft and, and do what they want there. And then also their ability to, to uh, prepare for life after football, which is really important for us. That they have a degree in their pocket and they're ready to go out and, and attack life when football ends because we all know that it ends at some time. Some of them at the end of their college career, and some of them three or four, if they're lucky enough, eight or nine years in the NFL. But uh, we, we do a really good job in our program with that. Third row on the right, Alicia. Uh, Alicia Galgallo with the Orlando Sentinel. Does this, would winning this bowl game mean anything more or different to you and the program, given all the struggles on and off the field that you've had the past <coughs> month or so? Yeah, you know, I don't feel it that way, that there's struggles on and off the field. You know, this football team has done a great job for 10 weeks, uh, really 11 weeks throughout the season. We're in the mention for the playoffs and being there. Uh, we stumbled at the end. That's hard to deal with and, and certainly something we're going to evaluate and really put a lot of time into to finding out what the reasons were uh, and, you know, how we correct that moving forward. Uh, but we got a group of guys that love each other, do a great job of practicing every day with a smile on their face, truly care about each other. 
So the benefits that they get from this season are going to last for the rest of their life. Three questions left. We're going to go on the left, then the right second row, then all the way in the back and wrap it up, Coach. So over here on the right. Sim Sullivan, uh, Courier Journal. Uh, Bobby, two questions. One, uh, your predecessor had a no guns policy. Wonder if you could clarify what yours is and whether you've reassessed it, whether players need them for self-defense, given what happened. Secondly, uh, what is the difference in your mind at using this game as a springboard going into next season between winning and losing? How much difference can that make? Yeah, we do have and starts our, our guys returning. So uh, certainly we're playing a tremendous football team from one of the best conferences in the country, uh, a program that I, I know a lot about and competed against them before that have great players and are very, very well coached. So it's a tremendous challenge for us. All the way in the back. Hey, Coach. Uh, Dylan Alvarez, Titan TV, LSU. Uh, being a former SEC coach yourself, what, you, what are your thoughts on the firing of Les Miles and the subsequent hiring of Ed? Yeah, well, I, I'm happy for Ed. You know, I've known Ed for a long time. I used to go down to Miami when he was coaching the D-line down there. Uh, used to spend a week or two in, during spring with Dennis Erickson and his staff and always admired how Ed got his guys to play and, and how talented they were and how well coached they are. Um, I think he's done a tremendous job coming in both at USC and LSU as the interim coach and he certainly has earned it and deserves it and I wish him the best of luck. Coach, thanks very much for the time. Enjoy your lunch with the players and all the fans. Thank you very much.